Good morning, everybody. My name is Rich Bolcher. I'm the VP of Marketing at uh, Gates and Controls up here in Seattle. With uh, We have six branches, a uh, branch in Spokane, Portland, Sacramento, Corona, San Diego. Did I miss one? <laughs> Maybe. Somebody will, somebody will correct me. In any case, six branches up and down the West Coast. And one of the things that we feel that we do very, very well is the technical support of our of the products that we represent. We only represent products that we believe are some of the top products in the market. And we work with the companies that we partner very closely with in a very powerful way to ensure that our dealers are well taken care of. We've got a new product that we're gonna be talking about this morning. We'll be talking a little bit probably about other products from the nice high security conglomerate. Um, I say that with, with all due respect. Uh, Nice and High Security has been around for close to 40 years at this point. Actually, High Security has been around for 40 years. Nice, maybe not quite that long, but um, that company is now coming into its own with some products that are that are that reflect a little bit of the nice side of things. Uh, it's really important for everybody to understand that the product that we're talking about this morning, kind of a breakthrough product, the Mercury 310 paired with the Titan 12L and the Apollo 1500 line linear actuators is a product that was completely engineered in, in, in the United States. This is not a nice product. So um, it is a nice product, but it's, it's not a product <laughs> that was engineered in, 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 uh, in Italy. Um, it may look a little bit European, but if, you were, if you're familiar with the 1050 board or 936 board, which is gone at this point, but the 1050 board, it's got a kind of a similar look to it, but I think that's where a lot of that ends. There's also some con connectivity that they have built into it that is definitely nice connectivity, which is really nice. Um, there's a long range, the LoRa uh, receiver and the transmitters that will get you up to a half mile of, of, uh, of uh, reception um, and communication, which is pretty dang, pretty dang cool. And is very, 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 very low noise. Um, uh, it, it's, a very, it's, it, it's very resistant to noise, RF noise. So um, it's really a solution that is, uh, is a, another breakthrough solution. Um, on that note, um, we're going to be talking here is the, the gentleman whose face you see on the screen is John Ike, J-O-N Ike. Um, he is the residential product manager at Nice High Security. And he's intimately knowledgeable of this product because he helped the product. He was in the, significantly in the process of the development of the product. Um, the, the thing that you've all heard at this point, I wanna mention one more time is that it's a breakthrough product primarily because it's a no sensor product. That doesn't mean that you can't have sensors. You can have sensors if you want, but you don't need sensors. And they've come up with some engineer, an engineering scheme that really makes that work and makes it work really cool. So without further ado, John, I'm gonna pass it on to you. Hi, good morning everyone. My name is John Ike, as Richard said. I'm the residential product manager uh, for NICE, uh, North America um, for the gate division. I've been at NICE for about two years, well, a little over two years now. And uh, so what I'm going to talk about today is, is a few products. Um, I'm going to talk about mostly Mercury 310, which, are, which is our next generation residential uh, controller. And then I'm also going to talk about the AC box, which is an, a dedicated AC enclosure specifically for the Mercury 310, uh, as well as the, uh, the long range uh, remote transmitter kit that we have and the Gates Control September promo that we have running right now. So I'm gonna go through all this stuff. Um, what you see there on the left is the Mercury 310, on the right is the AC box. As Richard said, um, this does look very familiar to you who have used the 936 and 1050, but that's pretty much where the similarities end. We do want to maintain the the nice look of controllers, the, the industrial design. Um, it is an attractive, it is attractive design language, um, but this controller was designed and built in the United States. So um, while we are an Italian company, this is a US controller. And um, I'm gonna go through all the uh, specific controls and, and adjustments in just a minute, but um, at a high level, um, we took a lot of feedback from customers, uh, from users of 636, 936, and 1050, and we came up with a controller that we are calling a simple controller. It is an entry level controller. Um, it does not have all the features of the 1050, but it is very simple to set up. And I'm gonna go through that in just a few minutes. So some of the key features of the Mercury 310, as I said, it has a simple user interface. 
So it, it does not have deep menu structures. It is not complicated. It is meant for an entry level gate installation that you can get in quickly install and quickly troubleshoot if you are having problems. Um, it is not a complicated controller. We, we got a lot of feedback from customers that said that a lot of these features on 1050 are fantastic and, and some people do use them, but what we need is something more like the 636, simple to install, but yet reliable and has certain features that the 636 did not have. So that's what we're doing with Mercury 310. It, uh, one of the most intriguing features <laughs> it is it is fully uh, UL325 compliant. It uses type C uh, force limiting, uh, does not require sensors to achieve UL325 compliance. And the way we do that is we have two um, integrated entrapment sensing technologies within the controller. So you don't need an external safety. We recommend an external safety. Obviously safety is very, very important. And we always recommend uh, an external safety device, but you're not required to achieve UL325 compliance. What we did to make Mercury 310 as simple as possible, we, uh, the engineering team, I don't want to say we, the engineering team did a great job of taking as many of the components as possible and make them auto-detecting. For example, sensors are connected, auto-detect sensors. Motors are connected. It automatically detects which motor is connected to the, to the, uh, uh, to the outputs. Um, it has a uh, soft start, soft stop, which is not available on some of our lower end controllers, which is a very, very important safety feature as well as reduces wear and tear on your, on your uh, gate equipment. Um, if anyone has ever used a 1050 and tried to update the firmware, it's a very painful process. I had the engineering walk me through it and it's incredibly complex. So we made that very simple. We have a USB port, you press a button, you plug in your USB drive, boom, done. Um, very, very simple. It is solar ready. Obviously with uh, those of you that have experience with Apollo, um, they kind of made their name in solar. Um, high security has extended that. And so with the Mercury 310, solar performance was very, very important to us. It has an MPP a charge controller built into the, the controller, uh, the, the gate operator controller. And it has better, it has the best solar performance of any nice controller we have ever had period um, by a by half so if, if you've ever connected up a 936 or a 1050 you're running about 17 18 milliamps of standby current draw uh, mercury 310 has 10 milliamps of standby current draw so it's very very solar efficient it's great for for remote properties and, and things like that um, Couple of features that we have on Mercury 310 that we don't have on 936 or 1050. We have a, a fail safe mode. So if the controller, if Mercury 310 detects that your battery is getting low on charge, uh, it will automatically open the gate and latch it open. So you have access to your property without um, getting out and having to manually uh, open the gate. That is a selectable on off feature. So it's not always enabled, but it's available to you if you if, if that's important to you. We also have a battery help LED. As you can see, I'll show that next screen. But um, it indicates that something may be wrong with your battery. It could be a low charge, it could be a dead cell. It doesn't say exactly what it is, just hey, something's wrong with your battery. You should probably call a technician and have them check it out. I think it's really important for you to spend a little bit more time to define for those companies that have never worked with a type C force limiting uh, control board, how and, and what does that mean, uh, type C force right. limiting, and why is that safe to use? Right. So type C, UL325, uh, the, the, the certification says that there must be two methods of entrapment detection. So type A, which is what everybody's kind of used to, it typically is one method on the controller and an external safety device. You can achieve that with two external safety devices, but uh, typically for a type A uh, controller, you have one internal and one external. That's what NICE has done in the past. Um, and, but with Mercury 310, <clears throat> we added two types internal to the controller. We have the typical uh, current sensing, which is what most controllers do for type A. You have that current sensing in the external. Um, and it will check for a spike in the, the current draw, which means, hey, your, your motor's working a little harder. Um, you've probably hit something. You should probably back that controller up. 
The other method that we have is the motor encoder frequency sensing. So if you're, if the, if the, everyone, well, not everyone, but the NICE controllers have an encoder on the gate, on the linear actuators, the, the, the Titan and the Apollo linear actuators. And what that is basically is just a counter that says the, the, the motor is moving and it's moving at a certain speed. And that helps the controller adjust soft start and soft stop, which is great. But also it allows us that if that encoder frequency, if the, the, the rate at which that encoder is spinning drops, that means you have hit something or you have uh, encountered an obstruction, back the gate up. Um, and then obviously being UL325, there's only a certain force you can apply. And so we make sure that it, you know, the, gate, the gate controller is as safe as possible. Now, what the implications of this are, which is why we always encourage an external safety device like a photo eye or an edge, is that this is not a, uh, a it is not gonna prevent the gate from hitting something. It's gonna prevent the gate from injuring or killing someone. So if you have a Mercury 310 installed with no photo eye, it will protect life, but it will not necessarily protect property. That's the, that's the purpose of UL325. So it will make sure that the gate does not injure someone, but you, know, you could, have, could have a gate strike on a vehicle, which is why we encourage you to use uh, external safety devices. But for remote properties, for vacation properties where you have very little traffic or for you know, farm and ranch where you've got cows, which are not gonna be killed with a gate operator, um, it's, ideal, it's an ideal controller. And then for those customers that you know, don't feel that they really need an external safety device, we have the UL325 compliance built into the controller and it's everything you need. So again, given the fact that you're talking about force, the force that the gate is going to exhibit when it hits something mm -hmm. uh, and that that's limited, does that impact the size of the gate that a Titan or a, an A16 or 1500 series Apollo operator can can uh, can can be attached to? No, it still supports the full the full 600 pounds for Apollo and 1,000 pounds for Titan, um, depending on the gate length, obviously. But um, no, it does it it fully supports both those gate operators at their capacity for um, for gate weight. But what it does is it limits the the, the force at the end of the gate, so that it does not uh, does not injure. So I'm going to kind of go around the clock here and show you all the controls and what the implications are. So at the very top, 12 noon, that's the USB port, USB port for firmware updating. Uh, you simply put the USB drive into the USB port, press the firmware update button to the left there, and the little LED to the right will flash for about three or four seconds as it uploads the firmware. It's very fast, so if you blink, you might miss it. Um, but what having this USB port, I'm kind of jumping ahead a slide, but, but um, it also enables uh, logging. So event logging for troubleshooting. And I'll go over that in the, in, in the next slide in just a minute. So to the right is the is the oxy uh, port. It, in this picture, uh, it has the uh, the rubber gasket as it ships out of the factory. You just pull that little rubber gasket off and, and you put your oxy receiver in there. So for uh, those people who don't know what an oxy port is, would you just define that? Yeah. So it's the it's the nice standard uh, port for uh, for receivers that we call oxy OXI. Um, we've had a couple of generations now. We're on the third or third generation, I think now, which is the bi-directional, uh, preparing the way for our bi-directional remotes. And we'll talk a little bit more about Oxy, but it's kind of a hmm, oddly shaped oval-ish. You can only insert it one way. Uh, it's very, uh, it's very uh, error-proof um, and it kind of sticks out of the, sticks out of the top of the board there. And this board will still support other receivers and transmitters besides Oxy, right? 
Yes, you can you can plug it up to a, a to one of your inputs, one of your step inputs, if you choose okay. to. Yeah. Um, you can. I, I'm not sure why you would. Oxys are, uh, as a matter of fact, with a, with the Mercury 310 bundles, you re, you get an Oxy receiver in it, in the in the bundle. So um, you could, if you if you're if you're set on using somebody else's receiver, or if you have a, a customer that has uh, you know multiple multiple remotes with different gate manufacturers, you could connect up a third party if you want. Um, just below the Oxy receiver, you have the um, the uh, program buttons for the remote. For so with the the remote and receiver that you get with the Mercury 310 bundles, um, you can program the remote either through the buttons on the controller here, or the Oxy also has a way to program remotes directly from uh, the Oxy uh, receiver itself. So you can use either method. Over here, you have the, uh, the gate operator controls, obviously open, close, stop, re uh, uh, stop, clear. The stop, clear is also the button you would press and hold to uh, eliminate the alarm condition. So if you, have a, if you have an alarm on your gate and you, know, you have a flashing LED, you'd press and hold to clear that out. Uh, we have fuses down here. Here's the battery LED that I talked about earlier. Uh, on the bottom, you have the power inputs, you have the motor outputs. On the left side, you have all of your uh, loops and sensors, um, your inputs, pretty standard for most controllers. Um, in the top, you have a display. It's a two-character LED display that will show you um, uh, error codes. And um, when you're programming the limits, it'll tell you kind of, it'll give you a little hint about what you're doing, uh, whether you're setting the open limit, the closed limit, um, things of that nature. Also, when you power on the remote, uh, power on the board for the first time, uh, anytime you power on the, the board, it will flash the version of firmware you have which is kind of important to know uh, occasionally. It looks like we have a question in the chat. Um, concern about the automatic sensing system having problems when the wind blows. Is it designed to handle movement from wind gusts? Um, yes, but uh, like most controllers, you have a, a force setting. So you can, if you're worried that it's gonna cause false IES trips, we have done a lot of testing in wind conditions uh, and the force setting is adjustable. So um, I don't think that's going to be a huge issue. Of course, the gate design itself uh, is very important. If you have a big uh, flat surface, you are going to be more susceptible to wind uh, and false IES trips. And that, it, that could be a problem. Uh, whereas, you know, more of a tubular style gate or a, a, or a you know, a, a rail type would, uh, would not be as susceptible. But you, you would have that really with uh, existing gate operators as well. So I don't think it's any more or less um, susceptible to wind than, than any other operator we have today. So I don't think that's a huge issue, but it's something to keep an eye out for. So John, I have a question. Do you hear me? Uh -huh. Sure. Yep. So how would you compare the Mercury 310 board from a 1050 board in terms of its ability to move a gate and deal with wind and strength of everything? Um, it's no weaker, right? No. No, it's no weaker. It's no stronger. Um, really, it, the when you think about the controller versus the actuator, uh, the actuators are the same. Right. The controller is really just how do you tell that actuator open? How do you tell it to close? And while you while it's moving, you're monitoring what's going on. So um, I would say that it is as um, competent as the 1050 is to be uh, cognizant of wind and things like that. I think it's probably uh, a little, it's probably a little better in wind conditions um, simply because the firmware has really been wrung out. The 1050 firmware um, has had a lot of patches over the years and uh, it's showing its age. It's a great controller, but it is older. This, we have more modern microcontrollers. We have more modern firmware. We have more modern firmware architecture. So I would say the Mercury 310 is, is just as capable as the 1050, um, but probably a little better designed from a hardware perspective because it's just more modern and we can anticipate more conditions uh, than we could with 1050. So put another way, this idea or concept or term of force limited maybe is a bit misleading. It's no more sensitive than the 1050, right? It's just a different technology. Isn't it about Correct. having 
two different built-in sensors, really. You have to, you're monitoring the, the operator in two ways instead of just one way. Correct. It's not just current. Is that a, a good way to describe it? That is a good way to describe it. I should probably change that. Um, really, the UL325 standard is pretty clear that if you have, you know, only once one method internal to the control, you must have an external safety device. Right. Um, and really, this one has two internal. So it still meets the full UL325 force limiting. I think that's in the spec, but it's you're right. It is a little misleading. The force limiting also applies to type A as well. It's not just type C. So, yeah. Well, and this is really important to Richard because we've been kind of, we've kind of coined onto this term force limiting as this defining phrase word that really sets this apart from anything else. But I also don't want it to be misleading. I don't want it to make yeah. people think that it's weak and just hypersensitive. No, it's really the type C is the is the defining characteristic, not necessarily the force. You know, actually uses the term type C force limited uh, uh, controller. So that, that is a UL term, but I could probably, you know, use yeah. other other ways of describing that. Right. Exactly. While we're on the screen, you know, though, John, I think it's really important. And I think it's something that dealers will be very excited about. Some dealers in particular is that function selector knob, you know, and how does that work versus going through long lists of programming options on other controllers that they may be regularly used to working with? Right. I was about to get there, actually. Yes. Yeah. So um, the 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 heart and soul really of Mercury 310 setting it up really is this is this function selector knob. Um, and it's pretty unique. Um, none of our competitors have it. Um, and it really speaks to the simplicity of the controller for, for even for 936, for 1050, um, you have to search through menu structures and make sure you have the right code in there and everything else. With, with Mercury 310, you simply turn the dial to the function you want to adjust. It, we, we have some factory default settings, the number, the, the default setting will flash up on the display. And if you want to change it, you simply use the left and right arrow keys to go up or down by a preset amount. Usually I think, you know, five, either one, either a setting of one or five seconds, depending on what, which setting you're talking about. But there's no program button. There's no set. There's no memory. It just auto saves every time you change a value. So you can get up here and change your force to from two to three and then change the dial to force to, to close timer, change it from, you know, 15 to 20, go to leaf delay, change that from five to 10. You don't have to set press. You don't have to press uh, memory or set or do any complicated procedure. It's just very, very simple. Um, and then the, the, the motor learn, the, the learn limits procedure is very simple as well. It's well-defined in the manual, uh, much simpler than 1050 or 936. Um, and then Another thing that we added to the to, to add to the simplicity to kind of save the installers a little bit of a, of a headache, which can be, you know, caused by the homeowner sometimes is you'll have a controller that, you know, the, the homeowner, there may be an issue with the gate or they'll get out there and they'll start pressing buttons just to see what they do. And it will it will change the settings to to what you 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 make your gate either inoperable or have an error, then it's caused, it generates a service call and you have to go out and say, oh, this setting was changed. And it may take you 20, 30 minutes to figure out exactly what setting was changed. We had it, we added a, 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 a setting on the dial called run. Now it's kind of a misnomer, meaning being it, that the, the gate will operate with the dial turned to any position, even the, the learn limits, it will, it will operate just fine. But what the run setting does is if you turn the dial to this little uh, section of the, of, the, of the control, it has detent, so it'll go click, click, click. Um, it disables the adjustment buttons on the controller. So um, once you get done setting up the controller and you have all the settings the way you want, you turn the knob to run, as long as the, the homeowner doesn't go out and change the knob setting, obviously, if they go out and start pressing buttons, um, it won't adjust your force, sens force sensitivity or your close timer or your leaf delay or your motor limits or anything, it won't mess any of your settings up. Um, and it's just one more little safety valve to hopefully prevent service tickets from being generated for, you know, piddly stuff, if you will. Um, one thing I do want to note about the function selector knob, it is, and we tried to, we tried to show that by not having any entry here at the bottom, it is not a 360 spin device. 
we, uh, we made that mistake in our beta test. We did not call that out specifically. And uh, we, had, did, we did have customers go out there and uh, snap the knob off. So what we did, one of the big results of our beta test is we uh, put in physical stops underneath the knob that are very, very beefy. So while you could go and break that knob, you'd probably have to get a, a pair of channel locks or something else to, to really crank it over to break it. So uh, we, we really enhance the durability of, of the knob if, if anybody's worried about that particular piece of it. John, I have a question. Yes. Um, I grew up with the 835 series and installed more fingers and toes than I have on my hand and feet. The 835 had a neat function and it was called an LED enable. And you could actually cheat the board a little bit during its initial learn cycles. Mm -hmm. And you could add an additional force to it and it would register and say, this is the amperage needed to run this size gate. And then if we had, we're in a windy area or a solid fill gate, we could LED enable it, add a little resistance to the gate, both open, close. And it would say, oh, I'm actually working on a heavier gate. So as we go through the learn function on this guy, is does this work in the same factor? Would I be able to add that additional force to get this guy to understand that it's a heavier gate? No, not really. Uh, the Mercury 310 is a real simple controller. Um, I'm not familiar with that function, um, but the Mercury 310 supports the gates up to the stated weight of both the, uh, the Titan and the Apollo arms. So there's really no kind of workaround to do that that I'm aware of. I can ask um, our engineering team, but I'm pretty certain that that is not in the, the firmware of the controller. That would have to be done at the firmware level. Now. I'm pretty sure so that- it goes Through its initial setup phase, it's obviously reading the weight of the gate, right? Due to amperage and pull. Is that true? Yeah. Yes, okay. it now, does does that, that, it, but it does that automatically. It does that automatically. And that, that's through the initial setup phase on it. Correct. So that would be, I would be curious to know if I were to add more resistance on it during that initial setup phase, would it, 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 it seems that it would work that way. It would say, because of you set up a gate, normal day, not windy, everything's fine. And then you keep right. getting callbacks and saying it's going into a failure mode because we have a solid fill gate. Um, it would be nice to learn how to work this board to adjust for that. And if there is a workaround, um, it, it doesn't seem that there is a, um, big selection of force. I've, I've had the um, um, uh, ability to wire one up here, uh, yeah. connect it to our demo gate and play with it. And I've learned it. Great board, super easy. I love what you guys have done. I'm a big fan of the 1050 board. I'll be honest with you. I didn't care much at all for the 936 when it came out. I no, have high hopes that. for this one. Um, but um, I tried setting this one up on our little demo gate. And of course, our little demo gate is all of about, you know, right, maybe five, four feet long. So there's no way of really getting to learn what this board will push. Because when we, as soon as we say add resistance to our demo gate, our demo starts sliding around on the floor. It's not actually out in the real world. Right. So, so uh, yeah, it, it, we, you can adjust the force on here. It's force one through five. But um, what that actually equates to, I'm not certain. Um, let me go back to engineering and find out how the gate would behave if you artificially added resistance to it to simulate a, a windy environment. Um, Perfect. And I'll, I'll get you an answer. Okay. Um, and I kind of came in a little bit late. I've been kind of touch and go on this. I've had a couple of customers I've been working with. Sure. Um, the OXI receiver, absolutely love it. Love the uh, frequency, love the range. On the 1050 board, we had a lot of um, abilities to do different channels. Channel one, you know, step, right? Yep. Channel two, I could toggle open. Um, and then I would have a channel three. If I learned um, a channel three, I could set that for Tuesday. So only the uh, pool guy could come in. It would only work on Tuesday between certain times. Is that still available on this board? Uh, the channels are, the Oxy has not changed. So you can still program multiple channels, um, but the, the timer, we do not have a timer on Mercury 310. So no time clock. No time clock. No seven day time clock on it. So no, no automatic open, no automatic close anymore. No. If you need that type of functionality, you'll need to continue to, uh, to get the, the 1050. 1050 or add an external timer to this device. Correct. You could use an external timer. Yeah. Okay. But it's not built in. Um, 
Another another question. Sorry, sure. sorry to have so many. I missed. No, I missed no, it's okay. That's what we're here for. Um, you guys did for a while make a 24 volt arm called a tuna. There are still some of those out there in the world, and they were connected to um, uh, the nine, 936 boards. Came out with them. Does this guy offer a 24 volt output or only 12 not. volt? Only 12 volt. Okay. So you'll need to continue to use a 1050 if you need a 24 volt um, supply. Okay, good. So while we're talking about limitations on this board, I think there are two other limitations that we needed to describe so that people can make sure that they are buying the right product for the for the site that they've got. And that is locks. Would you go into that, John? It, the, the mag lock and the- Oh, uh, mag lock, yeah. Yeah, so uh, it, it, is, it is only, it, it does only support, uh, speaking of limitations, it does only support our linear actuators, Titan and Apollo, and it does not have support for mag locks and solenoids. So if you're Edward, if you're if you need this, you know, seven day timer or a mag lock or a solenoid, you're going to continue to need to use the 1050. So also, what is John, that? I think it's really important given the fact that yeah. high security in particular has developed a reputation for logging that is pretty incredible. What it logs is, is the CNX machines, the slide smart, the space bar, they all log a huge amount of information about what's going on with the operator. So that is very valuable for you guys to go through that log in a situation where a dealer is trying to resolve a troubleshooting issue um, mm -hmm. or where the dealer can do it themselves. What kind of logging does the Mercury 310 offer? Well, it, it does offer logging. So um, the way that, that Mercury 310 logs is, is, is different from, from Connect uh, Smart, uh, the CNX, or other machines that will basically store um, logs and memory internal to the controller. What the Mercury 310 does is, uh, I noted, I, I talked about the firmware update, the USB port. Um, if you leave a USB device a thumb drive plugged into the port, as the Mercury 310 operates, it will stream a log file, log entries to that thumb drive. So you could put a two gigabyte thumb drive in there. And if you're having problems with your operator, um, it will stream logging events to that file. It's pretty simple, open, close, uh, stop for some reason, uh, entrapment, uh, detected, things of that nature. Very, very simple. It's not as extensive as Smart Connects, I will say that. Um, yeah. It's a very, this is meant to be a simple controller and the log file is also very simple, but it will it will note uh, entrapment uh, trips. Um, date time stamped. Nature. I'm sorry? Date time stamped. Yep, date time stamped for every entry. Um, but what it does is, it, for example, 936 did not have this, but um, neither did 636. Uh, and 1050 does some, somewhat. But um, it will allow you to, uh, if you're having trouble with the controller, you can't quite, uh, can't quite trouble, uh, track down what's going on. Uh, it's one more tool to help you troubleshoot. And our tech support team will be able to take this log file as well and provide you detailed troubleshooting information um, if you need to talk to them. I would have to double check. I would have to believe. Yeah. Um, Sorry about that. No, any other questions? Okay. Um, question. Do you sure. have a uh, dealer price for just the board only at the moment? I have the kits in my system, yeah. but I don't have a dealer price. I'm wondering how, how much savings we get for not having a seven day timer, not having maglock control, um, what is the price savings for this very uh, sim simpler board, simplified board? It's um, the the actual, I've got the list prices later, I'll show you that. Um, I don't wanna share dealer pricing because um, obviously this is a, a you would wanna communicate with your customer. Uh, understood or, okay. But I'll show you, I'll share the dealer price, uh, uh, the list price um, in a further slide. Any other questions? I think I've pretty much covered the next slide when we talked about the questions, but um, this is basically feature function benefit. Um, there's really nothing that we haven't already talked about here. Uh, let's see. I've heard a couple of you talk about the Blue Bus Oxy solution. 
And I'm sure that many of our dealers are not that familiar with Blue Bus and Oxy. What makes those special? Um, well, the, the, the nice thing about uh, Blue Bus is it's a 2R technology that the controller will automatically set, uh, uh, detect sensors uh, connected to the, to the bus. You can have up to six pairs, uh, six devices on a Blue Bus. So you can have up to six photo eyes. You're going to uh, connect it up and... Uh, NICE has a wide range of sizes and uh, types of Blue Bus photo eyes. Uh, we have some uh, that, that support, that's supported by Mercury 3. Um, it's very simple to set up and it's uh, easy to troubleshoot when it's, it's not functioning correctly. Um, and the, it's, it's an auto detecting type of technology that is unique to NICE. Um, and they're fairly affordable compared to some of the uh, competing products in the market. So it's a, it's a great technology. As far as Oxy goes, um, it's a 433 megahertz uh, transmitter receiver. Uh, I'm not sure if many of you people know that um, NICE actually started 20 something years ago by making remotes and transmitters. So it was actually in the founder's garage, one of those you know garage uh, startup type companies. And so that's where, this is kind of grown from uh, the uh, the remotes and trans transmitters are some of the best in the industry. They're very modular. Uh, they're compatible with our line of garage door openers as well. So you can have one remote that will open both your gate and your garage door. So um, it's it's a it's a very nice um, nice it's a very nice uh, technology. So John, there's a question: Is there going to be an app like the CNX app? That is a very good question. Um, not for Mercury 310. So Mercury 310 is what we're calling an, a non-connected controller. It does not have wireless. It does not have a lot of uh, you know, Wi-Fi or, or Ethernet connectivity that you would find in a Kinex uh, or even the, 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 uh, the IBT4N port on the, the 1050. It is meant to be an entry-level controller uh, that is very simple to install and very simple to troubleshoot. Once you start adding a lot of connectivity and wireless features, uh, you, know, you know, Bluetooth and things of that nature, which you have on some of the, the higher end controllers, um, it gets a lot more complex and a lot more costly. So Mercury 310 was really targeted at the entry level market. So I think I've covered everything on this slide. I'm just gonna, I just left it up for a while so that people could uh, read through it if there's something that was not there. John, um, yes, John, sir. Um, you may have already re, re, uh, recapped this, but um, solar, what's the largest panel I can connect to this? Um, well, the large, I mean, it's any-, any without, solar, having, without having to put a charge controller external on it. Will this thing um, handle a 30 watt, a 50 watt solar I, panel? I don't think it'll handle, it's 1.5 amp. I don't think it'll handle a 50 watt. Um, I know it'll handle a 20. I don't know about a 30. I'm, let me find that out. Okay. So from what I know is that the uh, the 1050 board should handle up to a 30 watt. Anything over that, we have to go outside of the board with the charge controller. Yeah. So I'm not sure what the, what I, I think the MPP controller on here is rated to 1.5 amps. Um, I'll double check. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Sorry, I'm taking notes. All right, something else that's very interesting that we've, we're doing with Mercury 310, which is uh, we're, we're piloting a new tool for installers uh, called Built. So Built is an application that will provide animated and voiced instructions for technical products. So I actually was introduced to Built when I, when I got my exercise bike. Uh, and it's, one of, it's, a, it's an app for your smartphone or your tablet. You download it. And it'll say, step one, do this. Now you could read it in the manual, but it, sometimes it's easier and it, and it is a, a lot uh, more beneficial to see what they're talking about as they're going through the steps for installation. So this is an, an app that is free to the customer or to the installer. Uh, you simply scan the barcode. You can see in the, in, the, in the graphic on the right, there'll be a flyer in each one of the boxes where you will be prompted to download the built app into your smartphone and you'll pre be presented uh, the Mercury 310 products. And it will walk you through um, in a 3D animated fashion, how to install the product. 
it mirrors everything in the installation manual, not so much the troubleshooting, just the installation part of it, but it's uh, 3D, it has voice instructions, um, and it goes step by step, meaning you, you, it'll, it, it's not a, a, like a movie, it'll go step one, do this, and then it'll wait for you to go, okay, I'm done with this, go on to the next step. So it goes at your own pace. Um, it's great for uh, training new personnel because they can see what they're doing as they do it. Um, and like I said, it's no charge. Uh, we're piloting this with uh, Mercury 310. If uh, we get a lot of positive feedback, which I expect we will, we're gonna consider rolling this out to more of our residential products. Um, and it just makes bringing up uh, you know, new installers uh, a lot quicker. Um, and it's, it's convenient. It also works as a great um, installation checklist, if you will. You know, sometimes you may get in a rush and you're trying to go through something. Oh, I forgot to do that. Well, this will help you. Oh, I did this, I did this, I did this, and work step right through the, uh, the installation process. So I'm very interested to see um, how people accept this and, uh, and what, their, what their experience is. So we're Fantastic. right now- Spanish and English? Uh, right now it's English only. Uh, we're looking at what, it, what it's going to take to do uh, Spanish. Uh, obviously, there's a little more complexity there, and uh, we would have to have uh, Spanish inbox documentation, which we're also working on. So the, we're finalizing all of the what they call procedures, which is every file that they do, and this should be uh, introduced into the, 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 the bundles um, in the next three to four weeks. So the initial, the initial uh, Units that are shipping to market right now do not have the built flyer in the app, but they will be uh, they will be added in the next three to four weeks. Okay. So we we've been talking a lot about you know what Mercury three ten is, but you know the question often comes up. So so why do I buy a Mercury three ten? Why don't I keep using a ten fifty? Why don't I keep using a six thirty six? Um, really, it boils down to three things. Simplicity is number one. Uh, you get three UL 325 uh, certification without having to use a photo eye. NICE always recommends including a photo eye, but you don't have to to get UL 325 certification. Many of the functions are auto detect. When you connect up a Titan or an Apollo arm, it's going to say, oh, I'm connected to Titan. I'm connected to Apollo. We've gotten some really detailed current maps, which, is a lot, which allows uh, much more reliable operation. And, it, and it's, it, it's so much easier to install than uh, some of other operators. And it's more reliable too. And I'll, I'll talk about that in a little bit as well. Um, faster installation means less time on site. So uh, if you can install an extra operator once a day, you know, time is money, right? So the simplicity of installation, the simplicity of troubleshooting, if you called for a trouble ticket, you're not going to spend two or three hours because it's being finicky. I've, I've talked to some installers that have, have spent all day trying to troubleshoot a, a 1050 because it's just not acting right or a 936 because, oh, the firmware wasn't updated or whatever else. Mercury 310 is much, much simpler to install and troubleshoot. Uh, we have ultra low standby current draw. So Apollo made its name in solar. It has some of the best, uh, some of the lowest standby current draw um, in the industry. Mercury 310 is even lower. 10 milliamps or less without accessories uh, connected. So it's a very, very efficient product for solar. And then fully compatible with NICE's ecosystem of accessories, remotes, transmitters, photo eyes, blue bus devices, things of that nature. So I often get asked, you know, where does Mercury 310 fit in the product line? Uh, many of you know, we've had 636 for better than 30 years. It's a great product, but it's not UL325 certified. It's very easy to install. You can install it with a screwdriver. Great, but it's not UL325. And that is becoming more and more important. So Mercury 310 is a direct replacement of 9, 936. We are no longer selling 936. And it fits directly between 636 and 1050. I feel that Mercury 310 is as easy or easier to set up than 636. Which is, which is really saying something. And as people that are currently buying 636 try Mercury 310, I'm confident that they will switch to Mercury 310 and stop installing 636, which is what we want. We want to have all of our products be UL325 certified. And that's what Mercury 310 gets us. Now we are not forcing a transition away from 636. 
we want people to try Mercury 310 and move there on their own. Um, so I anticipate that to happen in the next probably three to four years. And then we will discontinue the 636 once most customers are using Mercury 310. Uh, but we are not going to force that transition. I want to make that very, very clear. Um, 1050 has a lot of features that Mercury 310 does not. You know, we talked about a lot of them, mag locks, solenoids, seven day timer, things of that nature, 24 volt. Um, so there still is a place in the product for 1050. And um, Mercury 310 is kind of bridges that gap between the low end uh, before you need to have to go to the high end, the 1050 or even the, even the smart connects for the, for the very high end uh, premium residential market. We got a question, John. Can the huh? 310 be used? Can, can the 310 be used to change out? Uh, hold on a second. Old boards like the 835 or 636. Yes, they are not quite plug and play, so you can't disconnect the motor the motor outputs from the 636 plug and right to a Mercury 310 and not have to do anything. You still have to obviously wire it correctly. You still have to learn the limits. But um, it is definitely uh, one of the things we wanted to do is to, is to make it as easy as possible to replace uh, existing installations of 636 and 936. It's not quite plug and play, but it's very, very close. So John, for somebody who, I would say the vast majority of our, our, our dealers do not have uh, Apollo or uh, Titan experience. Can you go through some of the, particularly the Titan, which is, I'd say the step up from the Apollo uh, 1500 mm -hmm. series operators. Can you go into a bit of an explanation, maybe a visual explanation of what that uh, linear actuator offers for people who are gonna be moving not from your ecosystem, but possibly from somebody else's? Right, so I, I really, I, I don't have a slide for that, but I can I can talk to it definitely. I've got a, I've got a slide for the, uh, for the uh, uh, Titan, I'll put it up. Oh, okay, sure. Uh, so let's see it. Stop share. Let you do that. Now I can have the right. Does everybody see that? Uh, it's still coming up. Not yet. Oh, there we go. So uh, Titan, for those of you that are not familiar with with, uh, with our nice linear actuators, uh, Apollo is a linear actuator that we've sold for the last you know thirty years. Um, it's it's a, it's a great operator, um, but it, it's kind of machined and, and manufactured in a way that if it, if it breaks, it's not really easily field repairable. Titan was designed to be repaired in the field almost 100%. You don't have to pull a Titan off the gate, take it back to your shop and rework it. It's very, very, very modular. Um, another, another thing that Titan has that, that, that Apollo does not have, it has a, a this right here is a, a, a manual release to, to operate the gate manually. If you lose power for some reason, you don't have a backup battery. Um, it also is a locking manual release, so you can secure the gate and somebody can't walk up and just throw the lever and, and open your gate. Uh, this has the, uh, the, the, the motor cover and limit cover on, but underneath this is, the, is a physical um, access to the, to the limit devices, uh, the motor wiring, almost... I think, except for the extension arm, and maybe even the extension arm, um, everything on this operator can be repaired in the field, um, and it can be ordered as spare parts. Uh, with the, the downside of an, of an Apollo is you have if it if if you have to repair it, you have to pull it off the gate, take it back to your shop, and rework it. Um, so Titan is much more advanced. It's designed as a modular. Um, gate operator, modular linear actuator specifically for field repairs. Um, and it's, it's, that's one of its main selling points. And this box also, that's shown here? Sorry? Is, but this box that's shown here, would you define that? Yeah, so the, the box here, this is the, what we call the C box in the past. Um, this is, we're, we're rebranding this, calling it the solar box because we now have an AC box. And we, well, I showed you the AC box, and I'll, I'll go into more detail in, in the next part of the presentation. But the 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 C box or, or solar box um, is what we used to ship everything, in. and we got a lot of customer feedback that um, they wanted something a little more attractive, which is why we came up with the AC box. But the advantage of the C box is it has a large enclosure here for a very large battery. Um, many customers are worried that 
their battery is not large enough. So they want to have a really large enclosure so they can have a really large battery. And that's really kind of the, the main selling point for the for the C box, which we're now calling the solar box. And for solar, you're going to need a large battery anyway, right? Uh, you could. Um, the Mercury 310 has, has incredibly low standby power. So uh, even with an eight amp hour battery, you're getting quite a few uh, days of uh, downtime operation, grid, grid down um, power loss operation. But for customers that are on remote properties, they don't always have time to check. Having that larger battery gives a little more peace of mind. And it's really up to your installer and, and your customer, depending on how, you know, how important that is to them. Uh, but for, for all of our uh, solar applications, this is, the, this is the enclosure you would have. Gotcha. Yeah. Back to you, John. Okay. Let's see here. Back to here. Well, okay. That kicked me out. All right. Okay. Well, we're back. All right. So I talked about the positioning. Um, and that's a good segue, Richard, you're talking about the Titan and the solar box. Now we're going to talk about the AC box. So we had a lot of feedback from customers. They wanted a, a dedicated controller enclosure or AC solutions. Um, in the past, we had sold the C-Box with a, a little 404 battery charger and you would have to buy a, a battery to go with it uh, to operate the gate. Well, and, and the, in addition, the feedback was that the, the enclosure really wasn't that attractive. Some of our competitors had a nicer looking enclosure. Uh, when you hang this on, the, on your gate or the side of your house, you want it to look nice. So uh, we took all that feedback and we came up with a dedicated AC design that runs on the transformer, meaning that you don't have to have the battery to operate as long as AC power is up. Uh, it does have a backup battery and it is included with the AC box. So uh, you have a little bit of a redundancy there for AC solutions. Uh, and it as a plastic enclosure versus a metal enclosure. Now we originally said, well, geez, is that gonna be good enough? Uh, the feedback that we got directly from customers was that a plastic enclosure, as long as it looks good and is durable, um, is acceptable. So we came up with a, a, a kind of a gunmetal gray color, which meets, uh, which matches the, uh, if you remember the, the Titan picture, it had the little uh, manual release arm. It matches that color. So it looks like it's designed together, goes very well, and it's very attractive. So the gray is a very neutral color. We'll go with a lot of different color schemes on houses and gates. Uh, and the enclosure itself is very durable. It's a very thick uh, plastic and it's uh, UV resistant, it won't rust, it'll continue to look great for a long, long time. Uh, it also is locking, uh, it has a lock hasp already on the, it's lock ready, I guess. It has a, a hasp on the enclosure itself. So uh, molded in, it's nothing that you need to install. <coughs> and um, I'm gonna show you a little more details here. Uh, this is more of a computer aided design, obviously, but. One of the things that you can see here is uh, it's, a, it's a hinged plate that the controller mounts on. If you remember the picture of the, the, the C-Box, the controller was set pretty far back into the metal enclosure. If you're outside on a really bright sunny day and the controller is in shade, especially for 1050 and things of that nature, sometimes you have a hard time seeing which buttons you're trying to press and reading the print. What we did with this hinge plate is we moved it as far forward as we can. So when you open up the hinge cover on this enclosure, you see the controller very closely. You can read the printing. Um, you can see what buttons you're actuating. Uh, it's, it's a lot easier to, um, to tell what you're, what you're adjusting on the controller. Um, obviously here's the battery. We have the, the transformer here. Uh, behind the hinge plate is a, an accessory mounting area for loop detectors and things of that nature. And the bottom, you have the knockouts for your wiring and your, your AC uh, power, things of that nature. We also have the quick access label for, for all of our enclosures on the inside of the, the lid. So you have a very easy access to that. Looks like Edward, we have a question. Ask, Edward, will you ask your question? I'm not quite sure what you mean by one battery. So it just, it just has one battery in there, one, Correct. one eight and a half hour battery. Correct. I cannot put another one in there, even when that hint behind that other, that swing out door. If no, I not behind, not behind the hinge plate. 
not behind the display. We are looking at creating a, uh, a dual battery um, accessory kit. It ships with one battery, but we would basically, if you can see here, we would extend the battery shelf uh, and, and add another battery. Um, we haven't finalized that yet, but we're looking at doing that right now. But it's, you know, this is an AC design. The, the, the battery really is only a backup. Just for backup. Yeah. So I could take that battery out and that, uh, that AC transformer has got enough amps to drive my motor. Yes. yes. It, you could do that. Uh, but the, the reason that we have the, the, the backup battery is in case the AC goes out, you have the, you have the redundancy of the, of the battery failover. Um, we would not recommend running AC without the battery. You could, I guess. Kind of, don't, may not want to do that. Okay. Um, on that transformer, can I switch between 115 and 208, or is it just 115 only? 115 only. Standard house current. Okay. There we go. There we go. Uh, feature function benefit, same as the, same as the, uh, the one we showed for the Mercury 310. Um, I think I've covered everything here as well. I'll just leave it up for people to read. Um, I can't think of anything else I want to add. Is there a limit uh, in distance that you have to place that uh, box from the operator on the gate? I believe the recommended distance is six feet just for safety purposes. I don't think there's any there's not a distance from a technical perspective from the controller. I think it's just best practices to avoid, um, you know, the danger zone and things like that. This is more of a sales question. I, I know this is a technical seminar, but this is more of a sales question. Sure. Um, new products are uh, great um, and can be a little scary. Um, does uh, high security nice have some sort of um, introduction incentive promo up, uh, coming up? Um, to promote this because um, nobody's going to want to jump in and say, let's try this. Um, realistically, they're going to go with what they know so they can get in and get out and make their money and go on to the next one. Right. Trying new stuff, there's always a learning curve. Um, so maybe this is more of a question or maybe a follow-up. Um, if you guys can let us know if there's some sort of promo um, so we can get these into people's hands, we can see you know, the ease, the simplicity and say, boy, I like it. I want another one. That right. would be extremely helpful. Yeah, we don't have a, a sales promotion. Um, it, it's, a, it's a brand new product. Uh, we do have a pretty uh, healthy demo program. So you yourself have a, have a unit in your, in your, uh, your, your branch to show off. Um, we also have, uh, we had a pretty healthy beta program and the, we're gonna work on some testimonials with our beta testers, but we already had three of our beta testers say, based on their experience with the beta test, which is not even full production hardware, uh, they are gonna be switching over to Mercury 310 exclusively. So um, I think that once customers try it, like as you said, getting that, inducing that, that first trial, uh, and that's the hard part, but I think once people do try it, uh, they, will, they will be very excited and, and move over to it pretty quickly. One of the things you've done in the past, John, is when you've introduced a product, you've given a certain period of time, maybe a three month period or something like that, where there's kind of a no fault RMA mm -hmm. process. Is that being offered here or not? Uh, we have not decided to do that um, yet. So we're still waiting on, um, you know, to see how the, the acceptance goes. I, I, think, I think people are gonna be pretty excited about it. Um, I know that there's always, you know, the, the fear of new stuff uh, is real. But um, I think that the, the controller is so simple that once you go into a, 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 one of your branches and, and people try it out, say, wow, this is really easy. Um, I will say this. One of the things that on the pre-survey the pre poll that, um, that I wanted to highlight was about reliability. So um, we have designed this thing to be as reliable as possible. And I, I don't know how many of your people are familiar with Frank Pooley. Uh, he's a longtime installer, very well known in the industry. We gave one of these controllers to Frank. We said, Frank, break it. Do whatever you can to see what it takes to actually break this product. As people know, some of our controllers in the past that were designed in another country that won't be named uh, were, were less than reliable in certain instances. So reliability, 
was a very important factor. Basically, if we want this product to replace 636, it literally has to be bulletproof. So we gave this thing to Frank and said, Frank, do what you can to break it. He tried everything he could think of to break it. The only thing he was actually able to was directly short um, AC power from the wall across the controller to burn out some chips. He tried it. He tried everything he could possibly think of. Uh, and it was, he said in his words, it's bulletproof. So uh, we think that we have really achieved a great uh, reliability standard from which to build our residential products. And I think once people try this, they will really, um, they will really flock to it. And actually, John, you are offering a promotion for people who buy during the month of September. We are Gates, with, Gates with Gates Control. Control. Would you, it's a, would it's you go a to that? promotion. Yeah, we're going to talk about that in a little bit. Okay. First, I want to talk about Edward's favorite topic. These are our list prices for our products. Um, we have four bundles. So the way that you buy Mercury 310 today, in the past, we have done, anybody that's familiar with Titan Kit, we tried the, the one box solution where you get one box and everything in it. And it was a really kind of a mixed bag. Customers loved the idea of one part number to get everything to install the gate. What they didn't like was this big box. Uh, you all were not particularly uh, enamored with it because it caused you to re, you know, restack your shelving and things of that nature. So we've, we've kind of modified our, our go-to-market approach. We do have one part number. You will receive everything you need to install the, the operator, the control board, linear actuator, all the accessories, um, but you will receive them like you do the legacy nice products in, uh, in a couple of boxes. So it's easier to, to adjust the, the warehouse shelving and it's easier for people to put the installers to put the, the boxes on their truck. So we're offering Mercury 310. It's only compatible with Titan Apollo, uh, but we're offering four different SKUs. Titan with AC, Titan with solar, Apollo with AC and Apollo with solar. And the part numbering is very easy to decipher. Not, it's not a mystery. It's the T stands for Titan. 310 means it's, it's a Mercury 310 product. AC means it's AC and it's a bundle. So you get everything in one package, everything that you need. When you order one of these bundles, you get the controller and the enclosure. You get with AC, you get a backup battery. With the solar, you get a 10 watt solar panel. Um, and then you get the arm. Inbox, you're going to receive a quick start guide, which for any of you that have seen the Titan Quick Start Guide, it's front and back, uh, very easy. It's more like a checklist. It does not go into the details, the nitty gritties of troubleshooting and things like that, but it's a, a very easy way to read, especially if you once you've installed two or three, it's really a, a refresher more than anything else. We're also including something new, uh, a user guide, and it's really targeted at the end homeowner user so that they have uh, information and, and they're not going out there and, and messing around with the operator and causing problems for you. Uh, we are reducing the amount of documentation in the boxes. Uh, basically, the, uh, the technical reference manual and the ARM manual are going to remain online only. We did a lot of research on our documentation, and the customers were telling us, hey, this is great, but if I'm going to buy five operators, I don't need five 80-page manuals. I need one, and I'll keep it, but the rest I'm just going to throw away. So it's kind of irresponsible, and it, it causes extra shipping weight and all kinds of different things. So we decided to put our really thick manuals online. Uh, installers can download those, print them, or they can have a tablet, have it online access at the site, um, and then only include inside the box the stuff that's absolutely critical, which is the quick start guide and the user guide uh, for, for, each, for each operator bundle. Really important before we move this, leave the screen, John, is the prices that you see on the screen, uh, our dealers be aware that, that those are list prices, those are not dealer prices. Please contact your branch to get the exact uh, dealer price for you. Thanks. Right, and we did that because everybody's discount structure is gonna be a little bit different. We just wanted to have a list price that way everyone's playing on the same you know, level playing field. Um, and then down below these last two, this is what you were talking about, Edward, where you, uh, well, one of the things you were kind of inquiring about, um, you can buy just the enclosure. So if you want to retrofit, uh, you have a, you know, an Apollo that's been working fine for five years, but maybe the controller's a little flaky. It's a 936. You don't really like it. I can't really blame you. Um, you can uh, order a, a, a Mercury 310, either a solar or an AC, and just swap out the controller enclosure 
and you're off and running. Now there is a situation, I don't have it on this chart. If you find that you have the enclosure's fine, the, the gate's fine, the, the arm is fine, just the controller itself you want to order. Yes, the, the partner is MX4920. Um, and the, I don't think I have the price on here, but I think it's, a, it's about $100 cheaper than a 1050. I think it's, I don't want to say because I, I, I don't want to, I don't want people taking my name in vain. I give you the wrong price, but um, we do have it available as a part only um, that you can't order. And we do have those in stock. Okay. All right. So this is another new product we have, and this direct, relic, directly relates to the promotion we have going on in September with gates and controls. And I'll talk about that in just a minute, but the uh, Era One Long Range trans Transmitter and Remote with LoRa technology, that's a mouthful. Um, we just call it LoRa just because that's the, that seems to be the defining name that has stuck. Uh, it is a, an oxy type receiver, still 433 megahertz, fits in the oxy port of any nice operator that has an oxy port, so 936, 1050, smart connects, what this does is it allows you to have up to one kilometer range of gate operation. And I will say that one kilometer is direct line of sight. So if you have trees or buildings in the way, you're gonna you need a little bit, little bit reduced range. Um, but it uses the existing oxy port. It has a different type of remote. It has a, what we call a, a bi-directional remote. And what this does is in, a, in addition to having a really long range, you can query the gate to find out what the status is. So it has a what looks to be a standard era one four button remote, but one of those buttons is an info button. You press this button and it will give you, the, the, the light will give you the status of the gate. Um, if the gate is moving, it will be amber as shown in the diagram here. If the gate is closed, it'll be red. If the gate is open, it'll be green. So you have three programmable buttons and one info button. And the way that this works is you will press the button on the remote, the remote transmits to the oxy, and the oxy transmits the status back to the remote, thus the name bi-directional. Um, the kit that we offer is $224, and it's called the O-N-E-L-R kit slash A. It comes with two remotes, two of these remotes, one oxy, and I don't have a picture here, what we're calling a, uh, it's a relay adapter. So the really nice thing about this kit is that you can use it with any gate operator that has a relay input. So if you have a, a LiftMaster, US Automatic, um, Allomatic with, with a relay input on their controller, you can use this backpack adapter. Basically, it's a, it's a sleeve that the Oxy plugs into and, tra and translates the Oxy inputs to a relay output, basically. That's all it does. And uh, it will work with anybody's remote as long as it has that, uh, anybody's uh, gate operator, as long as it has a, a relay input. And these kits are $224. And in the month of September, when you buy any um, Mercury 310 product at gates and controls, you will receive one of the Aero One long range transmitter and remote kit, also called Laura, with your purchase for free. And that is when you buy the bundle, right, John? When you buy the bundle. So when we <laughs> talked about these four bundle part numbers here, you will get one kit with- uh, Per bundle. Per bundle, yes. And I want to now, clarify, a kilometer is about 0.6 miles. So you're getting more than a half mile range with this product. Right. Can you, and, can you qualify that a little bit? Um, I know that there's, a, there's an RF um, perspective on this also. Yeah, so the, the long range on it, that's what its primary use is. Um, the way that um, the, the, the one kilometer is, is clear, direct line of sight from transmitter to receiver. If you have, um, if you have buildings or trees or plants in the way, you're gonna get some reduced range, but it's still gonna be longer range than a standard um, era one remote. So um, everyone's you know, mileage may vary, some conditions apply, yada, yada, yada. Um, Probably longer range than most receiver and transmitters. Uh, I, I think it is. There are some, there are some really interesting technology solutions that yeah. don't use, uh, that use like, you know, you know, 
different radio frequencies that have as long or longer, but they're very expensive and very kind of unique. This is a very affordable economic solution that plugs into the existing controllers we have. So if you have a 1050 with range that you're not real happy with, LoRa may solve that problem. Another problem that the LoRa system um, does handle very, very well it are areas where you have a high RF interference. So if you're in an urban environment with a, a lot of what I call, you know, I'd say Wi-Fi noise, but it's really RF noise, you could be near a police station or a hospital. Hospitals use a tremendous amount of wireless, different wireless frequencies. Uh, and, and you sometimes will have remote uh, problems with your, you know, your cell phone or, or things of that nature. That's indicative of a noisy RF environment. The way that the uh, encryption and the encoding works on the LoRa frequency still uses 433, but it's encoded in a different way that makes it um, resistant to those, those noisy RF environments. So really the, the, the use case is two. If you have a, a really large property where you want the gate to be fully open before you get there, LoRa is a great solution for that. Or if you're in an urban environment with a lot of RF noise and you, you're having to keep pressing the re remote, you get all the way up to the gate before you can operate it, um, LoRa may be a solution for that as well. Uh, we have a, Edward, Edward has been trying to get my attention for the last five minutes. So uh, <laughs> what, what you got, Edward? Um, give me one second here. I'm going to see if I can silence this. One of my other guys will grab it here real quick. Um, the um, kit itself does, after the promo, will it be coming with a radio receiver? Yes. So the kit itself will always ship with two remotes, one oxy receiver, and one relay adapter. Okay. Uh, we are simply giving away the kit for free with the uh, September Gates and Controls promotion. Okay. Uh, but would that be that they're not the typical kit after September will not come with a with a lower, right? Yeah. Oh no, the bundles will not. No. Yeah. Okay, so when we September they do get the Laura. Yeah, and you'll need to put you'll need to put the part number for the Laura on the order in order to get the kit, but it will be it will be deducted out for you. And that'll okay. be a, a gates controls thing. Yeah. So as a, as a standard, after promos go, when I sell a Mercury kit, I'm going to have to throw an OXI as an additional line item on my sales order. Yes. No, it has it has it has an oxy and a remote in the in the Mercury bundle as well. Always. Always. Not the Laura Always. oxy. Just not the Laura version. Not the Laura version. Okay, perfect. Um, second question: I haven't seen how these guys are packaged. We have a lot of customers that are um, distance, uh, particularly some out in Hawaii. Uh, yeah. I've got some uh, good, um, you know, faithful Apollo users. Um, big critique is, is that um, we, we stock the Titan one box kit, but mm -hmm. when I sell it to a distance uh, place, I have to ship it as a C box and a, a and a Titan arm yeah. because that, that uh, small screen TV box is just murder to ship. Has there yep. been any improvement on packaging as far as this thing goes? Yeah. So I mentioned that earlier, you may have not have been on the call. Um, we, we, we're moving away from a one box solution, even though we have one, um, okay. uh, we have one, one part number to order, but mm -hmm. it will ship in a, it will ship in two different boxes. It'll ship in a Titan box and then a, uh, a, uh, a basically a C box package that we have better. There. Okay. Perfect. Sorry. Sorry to rehash that one. No, no, no. It's okay. It's Great. quite all right. It, it's important because we, we didn't get a lot of feedback. We thought, and I, I still think one box solution is is a great idea. Um, the problem is that the box is just too damn big. Agreed. Um, Bob Vetter asked one of your guys. Uh, yeah. John asked also other high security products. I think he was referring to the Laura backpack solution. Yep. Yeah. So <laughs> that that's also a great solution for other high security products. So um, if you if you want to if you need longer range for even you know. Smart DC or a, a, a you know slide driver, whatever else. As long as as long as the controller, any controller has the um, has a relay input, uh, you can use the, the the backpack adapter with that. It doesn't have to be you know third party, but um, it, it also legacy high security products as well. Um, you know, Hydraswing or I, I don't know the I don't know all the commercial industrial products, but. If it's got a relay input, you can use it. Okay. Uh, this is a slide on the that we just talked about. Um, but basically, these are the, the qualifying part numbers. 
Uh, and then once you buy that in the month of September with Gates and Controls, you will get that uh, Laura kit for free. So let's talk a little bit about sales support. Um, this is all fine and good, but um, you know, like Edward said, the things are new. You know, people want to know a little more information before they actually buy. Uh, and I mentioned Frank Pooley earlier. Frank has done a series of, of very short video clips that will give you the essentials on how to do certain things with Mercury 310. There are seven different videos, seven or six, six or seven. Um, and the best way to find those is to go to YouTube, go to our nice high security channel and look for our Mercury 310 playlist. It's got a good overview where Frank goes through each one of the controls. It's got um, programming the remotes, uh, connecting edges, uh, an overview of the AC box, uh, as well as updating firmware and uh, what you would do to uh, a retrofit uh, upgrading an installation that's already out there. And these are great, probably, I think the longest one is three minutes, the shortest one is a minute. So very quick bites on what Mercury 310, uh, what you can expect when you, when you start working with it. Thank you, Frank. Definitely, thank you, Frank. And then uh, other forms of sales support. So uh, let's say you get into this Mercury 310 and you've got a question. Um, we have our support.highsecurity.com. It's relatively new. I believe it's been out there for about nine months. Um, it's powered by Zendesk and it has a very powerful natural language search, very similar to Google. And it, you can go there, you can look, you can find spec sheets, manuals, the latest firmware, um, on not only Mercury 310, but every nice and high security product. It's a really useful tool as a first step to say, hey, I've got a problem. Let me go see what's out there. Maybe there's a tech bulletin on this thing. Um, you know, who knows? Um, if that fails you, you can always, always call our technical phone support. Same number it's always been. Um, and then occasionally we will be able to get a, uh, a van out to uh, some of your branches. We've done that with Gates Controls in the past where, um, our demo vans have all of our nice and high security products on there from a residential perspective. Um, and you can play with it and use it uh, before you actually buy. Um, it's a great um, resource to you know, put your hands on a product and kind of kick the tires before it's time to put your money down on the, on the table. So I'm gonna jump in here. I think that we're, we're done with the, the body of our, of our webinar. Um, I'm gonna launch another poll if that's okay with you, John. Absolutely. Okay, here we go. This is uh, to get a read from what you guys thought of this uh, product. Hold on one second. If you would all fill that out very briefly, it'll take a short period of time. Uh, are these, did these questions get addressed? Um, yes. We had all 11 people stay. That's that's impressive. Yeah. Good news. I presume that you all see the poll, right? I see it. Okay. I'm sure they do too. It took 30 seconds, 45 seconds for the first poll to start populating. There we go. That's good. Yeah, uh, Bay Area, San Francisco, and Richmond. Uh, John, I got a question for you. Okay, shoot. Um, so there's another company that's out there, um, and they don't have a, a maglock relay as a standard item in their board, but they do sell an optional part that is a maglock relay kit. And you open it up, you plug it into the board, and it's got some pretty simple instructions on how to do it. Do you foresee something like that happening with this? We have a lot of our customers like mag locks or solenoid locks that's yeah have this board not have that as needs yeah. needs to be well, well versed before it's sold or, or promoted yeah so mercury 310 was 
has been designed as an entry level product. It was never meant to, to service that segment of the market. We have that with 1050. Um, so I would say that we will, we will not be having a Maglock kit for Mercury 310. Um, but the 1050 remains a, a very solid controller that does have that support. So that's, that's where we would point customers that need that, that feature. Okay. Okay. Does anybody need some more time on the poll? Looks like we've got nine people who have answered. I'm going to give it a, maybe another few seconds. Oh, I have another question for you. Go for it. I saw that in your box, the uh, mount holes on this um, uh, had some sort of slide bracket rail assembly. The mount holes on this, do they mount up to any of the existing holes, like a 936, 636, or are they completely different? And you always need that mount kit. Yeah, so you, the, the, the holes are very similar, but you will need the mount kit because the, they're a little offset from our current controllers. Um, okay. it, we looked at, could we make it hole compatible uh, with existing controllers? And it would have, it would have made the, the controllers actually quite small. So it would have made, we would have had to spend extra money just on plastic to make it bigger. And we thought, why are we doing that? So it's, it's just easier to use the, the mounting bracket. I believe it's MX5000 was the mounting kit, but I'll, I'll get you those part numbers. That would be great. All right, I'm going to go ahead and end the poll and then I'll share the poll. And John, you want to comment about any of this? Just a second, I'm taking a note to myself. Yes, I do have comments. <laughs> um, so I'm glad the webinar was helpful, and I'm very glad that you're more interested. That people are generally more interested in Mercury 310 uh, than you know after seeing the content. Um, we also feel that not requiring external safety devices, but still allowing you to get a, a, a UL325 certified product, uh, we think this definitely could be a game changer. Uh, I'm glad that people see that it seems simple to, to install um, and enhancing our made in the USA uh, cred is good. Um, while we are, while we are belong to an Italian company, we're definitely, uh, definitely want to, you know, have American made products out here in our, in our market, especially to the U S. So I think that's good uh, that people recognize that. And I think we're going to try and make some, you know, call that a little more attention to that. Um, so it, uh, I'm a, I'm a little disappointed that uh, people have had bad experiences with nice Apollo products in the past. All I can say is the past is in the past. We're trying to get better. And the Mercury 310, I think, is the first step um, in doing that. So uh, all, I can, all I can say is please give us a chance and we'll try and earn your business. And we don't, we don't expect it, but we want to earn it. Um, and then most people have gotten what they need. So that's good. Um, once again, one person is ready to buy. One person is ready to buy. All right. Okay. I'll pass that on to you later. Super. Um, yeah. So as people start using these products, um, talk to talk to your distributors, your branch managers, and let them know. And then um, have the branch managers contact Richard. Let us know with feedback. We want to know if there's something we're not doing that we need to do, um, or, or something that we you really that we're doing you really like. Let us know. We'll do more of it. Um, we, we like that direct customer feedback, and that's the way we're, we are trying to build products going forward. So um, thank you for your time and attention. I really appreciate the opportunity, Richard, that, uh, to, to present Mercury 310 to, to your customers and branch managers. And uh, thanks again. John, thank you so much. You did a great job of, I think, answering all the questions uh, very credibly. And um, thank all of you dealers and high security, our gates and controls uh, staff for coming this morning. And for those of you who are gonna be watching this on, on, on videotape, reminder that uh, the, this month is the nice Mercury 310 Sweet Deals month. You'll get that sweet deal that we talked about earlier, the LoRa receiver and the two transmitters for free during this month, which uh, is a pretty cool product. And um, we'll also be rep, 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 um, pushing the, uh, and giving you more information about the BEA laser H100 sensor, um, the above ground vehicle detector. Um, so please contact your branch if you have any other questions or contact one of us here at, at, uh, at Gates and Controls in Kent. And thank you so much for participating this morning. Great job, John.
Thanks, Richard. Thanks, everyone.